5.2 Heartbeats Part 1. The heart rates of eight high school students are listed in beats per minute. What is the interquartile range, also known as the IQR? So I could plug this into my calculator and get all the five values I need, but since it's such a small data set, why not try and graph it? So first thing I'm going to do is find the smallest value, 72. Find the next smallest value, 75. Next smallest, uh, I see 76 twice. Then 77. Um, 78, 79, 81. Uh, that was poor planning. Sorry. All right, it's okay. I can still find the median. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be in between these two numbers. So that'll be 76.5 is my median. I just added those two divided by two, or since they're right next to each other, I know the middle is going to be right uh, halfway there. All right, now I'm looking at this uh, lower half, and I can see that um, we're going to have a, uh, well, actually, I would probably want to um, include this value as well, right? The bottom half, right? It's eight values total. So the bottom half is these four numbers. So then the, the median of the first half is going to be in between 75 and 76. And that'll be 75.5. And that's Q1. Do the same thing here. I get the middle between 78 and 79 from this whole set, and I'm going to get 78.5 for Q3. Okay, um, yeah. So then this is my min, and 81 is my max. So now I have the five values. I can make my um, I can make my box and box plot. Right, they didn't say that I had to make this, but I think it's helpful to sort of understand the data if you look at it that way. Okay, so I've got from 72 to 81, that's nine points. Let's just do nine centimeters across. Starting off with 72, 75, 76, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. Did I make a mistake? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I guess I just added more than I needed. Okay, that's fine. So my min is at 72. My Q1 is at 75.5. My median is at 76.5. Uh, my Q3 is at 78.5. And my max is at 81. Okay. Um, what is the interquartile range? Well, that's between Q1 and Q3. So what I can do for IQR is just subtract, find the difference. So Q3 is 78.5 minus Q1 is 75.5. Right between my two quartiles, there's a difference of three. So that's the IQR. How many values in the data set are less than Q1? Well, if Q1 is 75.5, then I've got one, two, two values less than Q1 between Q1 and the median. So between 75.5 and 76.5, two values again. C, between the median and Q3. So if we look at the median and Q3, um, median 76.5, Q3 78.5, I have two numbers, 77 and 78 in between those two. Greater than Q3, um, we're gonna have 79 and 81. So one thing you will notice about um, when you break a data set up into um, into the quartiles, it's really going to break it up into quarters, right? Two, 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 two. You know, those are all, they make up eight total numbers, and it's broken up, you know, quite evenly. And that's what happens when you use the median. 
or you get right in the middle of the whole data set. That's why these numbers are not really affected by skew. They do a pretty good job of showing where the center is. All right, a pod of dolphins contains 800 dolphins of various ages and lengths. The median length of dolphins in this pod is 5.8 feet. What information does this tell you about the length of dolphins in this pool? Okay, so when we talk about a, a, you know, a large set of numbers, like 800 dolphins, um, that's probably going to follow what we call a bell curve. A bell curve is normally how things in life tend to fall. Like, like I always use this example, you know, if this was height, this would be average height. Some people are a little bit taller, some people are smaller, but most people are around average height. So if I know that this median is 5.8 feet, I can say that most dolphins are 5.8 feet long. They checked 800 dolphins, that's a lot. It's not like they just went out into the ocean, found one dolphin and said, oh, he's 5.8 feet. They did considerable uh, surveying um, so I'd say that's a pretty reasonable number to, to say that they're 5.8 feet. All right, number four. The same vocabulary test with 50 questions is given to 600 students from 5th to 10th grades. And the number of correct responses is collected for each student in this group. The interquartile range is 40 correct responses. What information does this tell you about the number of correct responses for students taking this test? So let's think about what the possibilities are, right? If you're taking a vocabulary test with 50 questions, what's the lowest score you could get? Well, I guess the lowest score you could get would be a zero. And the highest score would be 50. So they're telling me that the interquartile range is going to be 40 correct responses. And let me see, did I, uh, it would be nice if I spaced it out perfectly and I didn't. So let's try this again, let's space it out. Let's put 50 at five here. So if we're assuming, you know, this is pretty typical stuff, um, the median is gonna be in the middle, right? That's normally where the median is. So it's gonna be somewhere like, let's say like, well, let me use my measuring, I got 2.5. So like 25, right? We would expect the median to be. So let's make that box plot what we think it would look like. So assuming, you know, this is symmetric, you would think that if there are 40 correct responses, that means this whole interquartile range is gonna be 40, AKA 20 on each side. So if I go down 20 from 25, that's gonna bring me to five. And five is gonna be like right there. And then we're gonna go up, um, go up 20 to uh, 45. So this is just the IQR, right? And then we said the min and max have to be these values right here. So what does this tell you? Well, <laughs> that's a huge range. The IQR is taking up almost the entire graph. So the fact that there's a test where if I'm talking about from here to there, right? This is like the first quarter. So this is like 25%, 50%, and 75% of students. Um, or the top 75th percentile is really what that means. Um, that's a huge disparity. If, there are, if that means that 25% of this grade got below 25% of the questions right, they got less than five questions right, um, oh wait, I'm sorry, they're not less than 25% of the questions right. They got less than five out of 50. So five out of 50 is 10%. So a quarter of the students, which is equal to, um, what's a quarter of 600? 150, right? That means 150 students got 10% or below. It also means that 150 students got 45 out of 50 or above. And what is that equal to? It's 90. So if I have 
a ton of students getting a 10% and a ton of students getting a 90, that is a huge disparity. Why is that happening? What could cause a lot of students to do very well, a lot of students to do very poorly? I don't know, maybe it's um, across several grades. So you have older and younger students taking it. Um, all right, maybe some students, you know, received uh, tutoring before the test. So they're doing way better than other students who are doing very poorly. There's a lot of reasons why this could happen. All right, so knowing that IQR, though, that information was enough to tell me that we've got a very large range of possible answers that students who are taking this test might respond with. All right, that's all for 5.2.